Imagine having the ability to set clear, audacious goals, stretching your limits, making stronger decisions, leading to extraordinary outcomes while unlocking your full potential. That is what mental models can do for you when you're setting goals. Last week, I covered how mental models can help you lead a more successful life. You might want to check it out if you want to have an helicopter view of all the mental models. In this video, I will guide you through five key mental models for goal setting, their origins, where you can apply them in life, and methodologies for making them happen today. Get ready to visualize and hit your target. My name is Greg Angelbert. I've had about a 20 year corporate career when I went from being a trainee to eventually a managing director, vice president of a business. And I went from managing myself to eventually about a thousand people. Today, I'm a master coach helping people, teams, and organizations to know themselves, to design their future self and to become their future selves. Before you get to goal setting, it is important that you have a higher level view of what you would like to achieve in your life. In this respect, goals can be short, mid or long-term endeavors. A good starting point is to look at what would you like to say about your life or other people say about your life when it ends. And also behind goals, you will see that sometimes it hides aspiration, the person that you would like to become. This is the future version of yourself that you aspire to become. So start by doing some introspection about this. And you might want to check this video here if you want to know a methodology for how to find your life purpose. Now that you've done with that, why are we using mental model for goal setting? That is to ensure that your goal setting is meaningful to you and others stretching you, your team, your organization to go beyond your current capabilities. That your goal is a true goal. It's not based on a misunderstanding of reality and effectively you will never reach it because it's misunderstood. Because a misunderstood goal is a goal that will never reach its target. It's suiting your nature and it's the right balance between risk taking and no risk at all. It is well defined and measurable so you can see your progress. What's a regret? It's a feeling of dissatisfaction, disappointment about past actions, decisions, or missed opportunities. It is usually backwards looking. You experience regret after an event. The regret minimization model involves looking at potential future regrets to help you design tech decisions today that will improve the fulfillment that you can achieve in your life. Here, fulfillment is something you need to define for yourself. So come back to this life purpose exercise we've talked about before. This model is attributed to Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. Bezos used this concept back in the early 90s to make a major life decision for himself. He wanted to be selling books online. His boss was intrigued, but told him that he should be thinking about it. He had a great job after all, so why go for a startup? So Bezos took 48 hours to think about it, but he needed a model to help him take this decision, something that would help him to come to the right answer for him. So he visualized himself being 80 and he asked himself the question, would I regret not having done this if I would be 80 or would I be happy to have done this? And his conclusion was that absolutely it is something that he would never regret doing to jump into this opportunity. And the rest is history. This model can help you guide decisions related to your health, like exercising regularly, maintaining a healthy diet or minimizing stress in your life. The key is to visualize what you would be regretting if you're not healthy later in your life. It also helps with financial choices when you visualize what would be the impact of excessive debts, not saving enough, uh, impulsive spending, or even if you are missing investment opportunities. It helps making decisions about personal relationship, considering the compatibility you have with a person, whether you have shared values and whether you are going to have long-term happiness. Will I regret having spent that time with this person later in my life? And also with career decisions, with looking at personal fulfillment, the career opportunities you might have, etc. Let's look at how you can apply this model. The first step is to clearly identify your short and long-term goals, considering different aspects of your life, such as career, relationship, health, and personal growth. Then imagine yourself at a future point in time, looking back at your decisions. Reflect on the potential regrets that you would like to avoid by them. Then evaluate different choices and options which are available to you when you're considering your goals and your potential regrets. Based on your analysis, make a decision which is limiting the potential regrets and maximizing the potential fulfillment. And make sure to continually reassess and adapt your decisions based on how your life is evolving and how those goals are evolving. There's much more to learn about how you can minimize your regrets and earn the life of fulfillment. And if you want to know more, 
check out this video here. Bags for big, hairy, ambitious goals are ambitious, inspiring, and unconventional goals that push you beyond your comfort zone. They go beyond incremental improvement and require a significant effort and innovation. They are intended to inspire you, your team, or your organization to achieve greater things. Bag was coined by Jim Collins and Jerry Porras in their book Build to Last. Visionary organizations set bags to make sure that they would reach very ambitious directions and extraordinary results. Think about Microsoft in the 80s and 90s with thinking about having one computer in every family. Or think about the JFK commencement speech where he said that the US would put an American on the moon before the end of the decade. You can set bags in various aspects of your life, whether it's about your education, it's about your relationships, it can be about self-improvement, etc. You can also link it to important causes, whether it's for yourself or for your organization, about climate change, about eradicating poverty uh, or advancing equality. What matters is that it's big to you, not to other people. The person you're stretching is yourself, or your team, or your organization. Here is a step-by-step -step to apply this method. Reflect on your passions, your interests, and areas where you want to have a strong impact. Set a clear and inspiring goal that stretches beyond conventional statements. Ensure that it's aligned with your passions and your core values. Then divide your bag into smaller and actionable steps. This helps create a roadmap for progress and will give you a sense of achievement along the way. While on the journey, then embrace learning, failures, and opportunities for changing, growing. Perseverance and resilience are what matter here. Seek out mentors, coaches, like-minded people who can offer guidance, support, motivation, so you can get to your bag. You like this video so far? Then you know what to do. Also, subscribe and put the notifications on if you want to receive content like this every week. And if you want to learn more about goal setting and mental model, check out in the description all the links that you can dig in. First principles involve breaking down complex problems or goals into fundamental truths to build innovative solutions. They are basic foundational truths that serve as building blocks for reasoning and decision making. So this model is very much about critical thinking, to finding very different type of solutions, and also to make sure that you do not live according to false assumptions. First principles date back all the way to ancient Greece with Greek philosophers, particularly Aristotle. Isaac Newton used it for evolving his theories of physics and also building calculus. René Descartes in the 17th century created the inquiry method that is a further development of the first principle. And for more recent application and people who talk about it, you have Elon Musk who talks a lot about it for creating breakthrough innovation for SpaceX and Tesla. And an example coming from SpaceX was this big idea of making a commercially viable spacecraft instead of relying on the public sphere to finance going to space. From a first principles perspective, SpaceX came back to understanding what are the costs which are behind everything which is being done for spaceflight and what is really truly necessary for having cost-effective spaceflight. Hence eventually coming up with the idea of reusable rockets, when the conventional thinking is that you could not reuse rockets. For you, you can use it to break down complex problems into manageable bits and also understanding the assumptions that you have behind your problem so you can find innovative solutions. Here are some ways that you can apply this model. The first step is to clearly identify and define the goal that you would like to achieve. Analyze the problem or goal and look at its fundamental elements, its fundamental truths. Question the assumptions you have and the preconceived notions. Then generate new ideas, new solutions based on the fundamental truths that you have identified. Here you challenge existing concepts, like you can't reuse a rocket. Assess the feasibility and viability of the alternative options. Consider factors such as your resources, your constraints, and the potential impact. Then refine the solution based on further feedback and further analysis. Finally, develop an action plan and execute it. Make adjustments as you go along. The barbell method involves a two-pronged approach combining safe and conservative actions with high-risk, high-reward actions. So this is about not getting stuck doing nothing and at the same time not getting swept away into crazy actions with a lot of risk without having a strong, solid risk-free base. This model was coined by Nassim Nicholas Taleb, who is a renowned author and risk analyst. It draws inspiration from the physical barbell, with weight distributed at the two extreme ends, representing safe and risky choices. 
You can apply the barbell method to investment strategies, for instance, where you would allocate part of your portfolio to low risk type of investment, type of assets, and another part to more risky assets, to bigger bets with a chance of higher return, but maybe higher losses too. You can also use it for learning by balancing foundational type of learning on, based on theories, on basic principle, and at the same time looking for a more adventurous type of learning, more edge type of learning in a specific topic. Also to current choices and entrepreneurial ventures. You can balance throughout your life, uh, because that's the best way of looking at it, something that would be a stable job that is going to bring you a stable financial savings, and at the same time, sometime in your life to take higher risk, create a business uh, for yourself or with other people. A step-by-step -step way of applying this mental model. The first step is to define what are the options, the activities um, that you have, which are low risk in your life. Determine the active options or activities that provide stability, security, and incremental progress. Those are the low risk, conservative actions. Then identify the high risk, high reward opportunities. Divide your time, energy, and resources between the part of the barbell which is high risk and the part of the barbell which is low risk. This needs to be aligned to your risk tolerance, to what you feel is the right balance. And at regular time, you should be assessing how this is progressing. Are you having a feeling that there is too much risk, not enough risk? It's important that you adjust at that time. OKR stands for Objective and Key Results. It's a goal-setting framework that helps individuals and organizations to be clear about the ways that they define objectives and at the same time how they follow through on key results that they would like to achieve. It involves setting clear, ambitious objectives and defining measurable key results that indicate progress towards those objectives. It's all about focus, alignment, and transparency in goal setting and execution. Andy Grove, the former CEO of Intel, uh, is the one who popularized this framework and he talks about it in his book, High Output Management. There are numerous companies using it worldwide, including one that is very famous, and that's Google. Since 1999, they use OKR. You can also use OKR to set and track your personal goals in your life. For me, I use it in conjunction with my Aspire model. So I set up OKRs for every objective that I come across when I want to have high well-being through spiritual, physical, intellectual, relational and emotional well-being, all those components. You can also use it obviously in teams and organizations to set some clear goals, some ambitious goals and also to keep track of where you're going. For organizations, it's very useful to help with strategic goals and also the alignment of different teams, departments between each other so everybody is going through the same objective. Here is a step-by-step -step way of applying this model. Define clear, ambitious objectives that articulate what you want to achieve. And you can use all the other models for that. Identify key results that will help you to make progress towards achieving the objective. Key results should be concrete, they should be quantifiable and challenging but achievable. The objective and key results should be created together with the relevant stakeholders who are participating in this objective, whether it's team members, colleagues, managers, etc. This way you get alignment, you get motivation and commitment. Continually monitor and update the progress of key results. Use regular check-ins and progress reviews to assess performance, make adjustments and provide feedback. Reflect on the outcomes and learn from both successes and failures. Adjust objectives and key results as you need. There's another mental model that you can use to be sharp when you're doing your OKR. And that's smart, to have goals and metrics which are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound. Now that you have all those models, go practice. It takes a while to be able to articulate them into your life on a daily basis. The key is persistence, resilience and see what works for you. And make sure to mix them up because you can see that different models help you to look at goal setting with different angles. So a model might be more useful than another at a specific point in time. I will leave you with a quote from Michelangelo who was an Italian artist from the 16th century. The greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and we reach it. The key elements of supporting achieving your goals is to have strong habits. If you want to learn more about how you can combine strong goal setting with powerful habits, then check out this video here.